Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women's Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation. So sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stitch Please podcast. I am your host, Lisa Woolfork. And as I say every week, this is a very special episode because I am talking with Monde Matumba Chisenga. And one of the wonderful things about Monde is that she is very happy to break the rules of sewing club. Because in my opinion, sewing club is like fight club. One of the top rules that you don't talk about sewing club. And in particular, you don't tell anybody you sew because they'll want you to hem their pants <laughs> or they'll want you to do things for them. Now, Monday is of the opinion that she will happily hem your pants. And she actually tells people, y'all, that she not only knows how to alter things, she will alter them for you. What? So let us learn about this great humanitarian. Monday Matuma Chisenga, welcome Monday to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. <laughs> so, thank you so much for being here with us today. Monday, can you tell us a bit about your sewing story? How did you get started? What are some of your earliest memories of sewing in your sewing life? Who sewing life. Well, I learned how to sew from my mom. I think she was a seamstress. I mean, I was young, so I didn't really know exactly what she was doing. We used to live in the UK and I think she used to work for a factory or something that had to do with sewing. Okay. So I picked, she, she had a sewing machine at home and I picked it up from there. Wow. Moved back to Zambia. I'm originally from Zambia. <laughs> so we moved back to Zambia and she, she still sewed and she started sewing for people. So that's how I picked up wow. sewing. But I used to make sewing for my dolls. I used to sew clothes for my dolls few things for myself. But then after that, I think it was just growing up and losing interest. And that's how I just, (laughs) I abandoned the craft. I eventually moved to North America. Yeah, I'm taking you way back. I love it. I love it. I love this journey from the UK to Zambia to North America. I love it. Get it transcontinental. Come on now. Tell us all. Yeah, world traveler. So I moved to North America, got married, no sewing in sight. I started working and I was at a very stressful, it was stressful to me. Yes. I thought this was like my dream job because it was a not-for-profit organization, Christian organization, doing God's work, of course. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And I was in accounting and I had gone to school for accounting. Okay. So I was like, perfect doing what I went to school for Christian organization. And I was working part-time, no Monday, no Friday. Oh, wow. So So you are like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, middle of the week, practicing your faith, practicing your training from university that you had studied to become an accountant. And every week you get a four day weekend. So like, what's not to love? And Monday's like, there's a lot not to love. This is (laughs) true. Tell us about how yeah. sewing became a break from that. Woo. Yeah. So it became very stressful for me. And so I started to sew as a stress reliever because I started to get a bit of anxiety as well. Like going back to work, I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have to go back to work? I don't want to go back to work. And so my husband had suggested, okay, why don't you do something that's unrelated to what you're doing at work? Okay. And that sewing, you mentioned that you used to sew. So why don't you take that up? And I was like, okay, sure. So he bought me a sewing machine and for some time I didn't touch it. I just let it be, but things started getting really bad. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? Let me, let me start sewing. So I did start sewing. You don't lose the skill. It's just, I guess, with a new sewing machine, learning new techniques. So it was really like I was starting afresh. So I would say I kind of like retaught myself how to sew. Like I had the memory, but yeah, I was still, I was still practicing and not really perfecting, but progressing in the skill. (laughs) So from then I would wear my makes, I would wear my makes to church 
And people started asking, oh, that's so nice. Where did you get that from? I, I would be like, I made it. <laughs> like, what? Oh, see, made it? <laughs> right. That's so club. The sewing club rule. You aren't supposed to tell them Monday. No. Don't tell them. That was know. my first mistake. No. Oh my goodness. I don't know how we didn't get the primer over to the UK or to Zambia <laughs> that you aren't supposed to tell people in North America that you know how to sew. That that's like, oh goodness. Okay, continue. Okay, we'll work See, on that. I didn't know. I wish someone had told me. I was just so proud of what I had made. I was like, I made this. <laughs> and they were like, oh, can you make this for me? And I was like, at that time, I said no, because I wasn't confident in making things for other people. <laughs> I was like, firstly, I am praying that this stays on. It doesn't fall apart. No <laughs> stitches come loose. <laughs> exactly. I would like to praise the Lord in this outfit, but I'm not sure the seams are going to stand up. I'd like to lift my hands in glory, but like, I don't know if my underarm's going to rip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. So I was like, mm, no, I'm not sewing for people. So then I was confidently saying no. And then back to work, situation is still not good. And my husband was like, you know what? If this job is causing you a lot of stress, why don't you just leave? Like take a break, stay home for a bit and we'll figure something out. Like we'll figure out if that's where you want to continue. If it's accounting that you want to do, we'll figure that out. So I was kind of a bit apprehensive because I was like, I mean, we've heard of stay-at-home moms, but there was no kid in sight. <laughs> I didn't have any kids. So I'm like, what are people going to think about me? Oh, she's just a trophy wife at home. They're not think she's got a loving spouse who cares about her health. That's what Listen, they're going to think. I didn't know. That's, I didn't even think that. I was like, no, they're just going to judge me and, and think, oh, she's just with him for his money. And I don't know. I don't know. Like all these just crazy thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I wish I had known you then because I would have said no one thinks that. And also, who cares? I know. I know. The who cares? Who cares? It's your life. Live it. Ma'am. <laughs> your spouse is saying, okay, you know what? I got you this sewing machine to help deal with anxiety. And mm -hmm. now I'm saying, hey, we can work together as a family to figure out because I'd rather have a happy wife than a wife who is miserable and unhappy. And let's see if we can have you be happy. Let's try exactly. that. Exactly. And you're like, I don't know if I can. I wasn't that. hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hindsight is 2020. So yes, it is. <laughs> yes. And every day we learn lessons so that we don't have to learn them again, you know? So that's true. I say it was a it was a God thing because I feel like God was making it so uncomfortable for me in that situation mm -hmm. to help me. It was like he was nudging me. You need to step out in faith because I got you. I really got you. Just take a step <laughs> wow. and trust me. Yes, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It's so great. You know that we hear all these different stories, depending on the, the Christian faith tradition you might have grown up with. There's this, these jokes about like, you know, um, like a flood comes and a person like climbs onto the roof of the house and you know, somebody comes by with a boat and a helicopter and no, no, I don't need your boat or helicopter. God's going <laughs> to save me. And then the person dies and ends up going up to meet God and God, why didn't you save me? And God's like, dude, I sent a boat I and a helicopter and you right. declined, right? right. So exactly. you think you're in this Christian organization doing what you're supposed to do as a woman of faith and also like utterly miserable. Yep. So yep. then enter the sewing machine, enter the, your spouse saying, hey, things can be different. Let's give it a try. And you yeah. say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, eventually I decided to quit. I was like, enough is enough. Yes. If God says he's got me, he's got me. The Bible says pursue peace. And so that's what I wanted. I'm like, that is what I'm going to pursue, peace. And so I quit my corporate job in, I think that was like September, 2016. And for some reason, the week before, I don't think it was the week before the week after I decided I was going to start taking custom orders. So anyone who asked me if they wanted something made, I was going to say yes. Oh, actually it was the, the week after. So I quit my job. Yes. And then the next weekend at church, 
someone asked me, oh, can you make this? Can you make this? And I was like, yes, I can make this for you. And that person told another person and told another person and told another person. And that's how my, I guess I was set because it was prom orders. Everyone needed oh, prom dress. Yes. Right. Like, what? <laughs> it's like you quit at the right season. I quit at the right season. And it was like, like God was just waiting for me to say yes to that, to open the floodgates. <laughs> So this is what I find interesting about that. You left the job because you found the job to be stressful mm -hmm. only to take on alterations and custom sewing, which I personally find stressful. So I don't know what it is about you and your love of stressful situations. I mean, no. the fact that you like voluntarily tell people you will alter their clothes is just like, shh. <laughs> I don't know why that. <laughs> so tell me a bit about how you found joy because you seem to clearly be joyful, right? Um, that the same stress that you had at your corporate job is not the stress you seem to have at your custom job. Tell us about that change. I mean, I love sewing. I love sewing. It was a stress reliever. I love to grow in sewing. I love to learn in sewing. And so that's where the sewing enthusiast comes in because I'm really passionate about it. And if I can help people, I don't look at it as really being stressful. <laughs> I can if tell because you're smiling. Listen, y'all, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you get to see the video of us looking amazing <laughs> and really cute. And you can see the whole time Monday is smiling. She's talking yeah. about alterations and custom sewing and dealing with measuring people's bodies <laughs> and, with them and dealing with their complaints. And she is cackling with genuine laughter. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I really don't know what it is, but I do. I do love it. I do enjoy it. I mean, it's something that I can do to help people. Yes. And so, yes. I mean, if, if I can help you, <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> I, I really love that. I absolutely love that. So you take this step, you leave something you don't care for that's not sustaining you, that's yes. stressing you out, that's depleting you, and you step into something that is something you love. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to build a craft practice as well as were you taking orders in terms of were you volunteering to do this for, for people or did you start taking businesses, start taking you know, commerce right away when you stepped into that? Yeah. So it was, it was commerce right away. I would say commerce right away. So I turned my sewing into a business. Well, I want to say <laughs> it was a business. She's doing air quotes here. What it really was, was an expensive hobby. Because <laughs> <laughs> businesses bring money in. <laughs> yes. And I thought I was bringing in money. Really, what I was doing was charging for the fabric. Really, yeah. that, that was it. it was, I was just charging for the fabric. But my labor, it was almost like I was donating my time. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Which was okay, I guess, which was okay at the time. But then the thing with that is that it becomes very taxing because you're putting in so much, so much time sewing and you're not really getting much back. Yes. So yeah, I kind of had to reevaluate and re shift around some things, some yes. mindsets and yeah, <laughs> create a business. <laughs> yes. yes. That covered more than just the material costs of fabric. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I think it's just the journey of entrepreneurship and having a business and figure, figuring things out. Yes. You start off by really undercharging yourself. Yes. yes. So yeah, with time, I started to try and at least <laughs> charge what I felt was a good, <laughs> a good yes. amount of money for the services that I was providing. Yes. So, so yeah, that's been my journey. So yes, I started out with custom, custom clothing. I rarely did alterations. Okay. But the pandemic hit and no prom. <laughs> right. right, right. So you had to make some transitions in your model. Yes, yes. And so coming out of the pandemic, everyone, we all had this pandemic wait. <laughs> <laughs> so some alterations seem to be necessary. Yes, yes. 
I mean, some, some went on the positive, some went on the negative. I had a few people who did amazing. They had lost weight. I was like, how did you do it? Cause no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I like all the bot. And that's one thing I love about your work is that you are very size inclusive. I think you had this gorgeous gown from a, this pregnant lady. She looked like she's maybe about seven months. Yeah, yeah. And the gown fit her beautifully. And so I really believe that one of the benefits of sewing your own clothes is that it lets you love and appreciate your body, however it looks. If your body is a big body, you can sew for your body. If your body is a little body, you can sew for your body. Your body is yeah. pregnant, your body is trans, your body is whatever, whatever your body is, yep. you can make something for your body that looks good and feels good. And yeah. if you can't do that because you don't have the skill, there is this very kind lady I met named Monde, and she will take your stuff that no longer fits and make it fit. If you got bigger, she'll make it bigger. You got smaller, she'll make it smaller. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. And I find it funny. It's I'm like, why are people saying no? Honestly, this is my take on alterations. It's the easiest thing you can do. You're not making a whole outfit. So that's why I'm like, I can hem your pants rather than making you the pants. <laughs> you need me to hem your pants. I can do that. <laughs> Don't ask me to make the whole outfit. I mean, I didn't mind that, but like I said, it was a bit taxing on my body. Yes. So I was like, okay, so let me try and ease up on doing custom orders and see what I can do with alterations. And so, yes, I'll hem your pants before a fee. It's not for free. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. For fee. And it's affordable. I mean, yes. I'm, well, it depends. It depends. Because I hear people are paying quite a bit of money to get their pants hemmed. Yes. I'm like, I'm affordable. <laughs> and listen, listen, Monday, sis, sis, you do not owe anyone affordability. That is not that your is budget. So your budget. Yeah. My budget, their budget is not your problem. That's true. And that the thing that you true. are doing has value and deserves to be compensated. Yes. In a way that values that value. Yes. You don't have to be the cheapest. You don't have to. I keep telling people all the time, we have to stop thinking of ourselves as in competition with Walmart. Oh my gosh, yes. Or Target. That you is know? so true. Like, oh, I Target charges $7 for a t-shirt. And I'm like, yeah, because that's a thousand gallons of water and a lot of exploitation. That's exactly. how we're doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Monday exactly. is not making a $7 t-shirt. No. Like, <laughs> the global South. There's some kids in Indonesia who are making these things. Like, stop saying that this is the way it should be. Everything and it's really, it's really a mindset shift because I don't know where we got it from. And I don't know why we feel we don't deserve to be compensated or paid the value, like you said, the value of, of what we're worth. Yeah. So it really is like a mindset shift that we should, we should have. And uh, even for me, like I'm getting there. It's a journey. It's a journey. I didn't charge what I used to charge. Like before, like I said, I was just charging my cost. I wasn't yes. ma making yes. any money. Yes. If you give me the fabric, I'll do the work for free. Just bring yeah. me the fabric. I'll do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. I found doing that almost started making me hate the craft. Yep. Resentful yeah. for sure. Yes, yes, yes. And I was like, I don't want to be in that place. And the thing is, you're going to go away and pay someone else, right? And probably even pay them more. They will so. definitely pay them more. They yes. will definitely. Don't even think for a second mm -hmm. that there's someone out there that they are going to because they charge less. That is yeah. not the case at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a mindset shift that I'm continually working on. But yeah, I'm going to hem your pants, but for a fee. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And I really feel as though, particularly if you're part of a community, that it is the responsibility of the community to support, right? Yes. And it is absolutely a mindset shift. Because at least for me, one thing that I'm excited about for you is that you've already had several mindset shifts right? You had a mindset shift when you decided to leave that job that was stressing you out. So that yeah. was one big mindset shift. That took a lot, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Over, um, like, you know, I did all this training and this seems like it's part of my faith. And I don't want to feel like if I'm quitting this job, I'm 
being a bad Christian or whatever, like all of these things that might've been going through your head, you processed all of that out. Yep. And were able to do something that made you feel good and happy. Similarly, I think that when we start to charge more, when we start to say we are worth more than we are getting, Mm -hmm. it helps us elevate the way we think of ourselves and other things, right? So I was just talking to my husband the other day about something. I was like, oh, I want to get this thing, but it feels really expensive and I just don't know. And he was like, but you're always saying that people who do craft things need to be compensated. I said, you're right. You're right. When I see something at a higher price point than I think that I would pay, I have to ask myself, why am I thinking that? Is Mm. it because this comes from a woman? Is it because it's about sewing? Is it because like, why am I saying it doesn't have that value? Yeah. What what stories am I inheriting that is lowering the value of that? But there's other things that I'll buy and never question. Yeah. That is so true. (laughs) It's true, right? Like there's other things that we might get or buy, like, you know, a pair of shoes from Adidas or Nike or whatever. It's like, okay, that's $175. Yes. And I would pay that, you know, as an example, but you know what I mean? Like (laughs) as an example, if you've seen some of my, I guess they're reels. Yes. I kind of like make fun about that. Like people want to come to me and try and be cheap or complain about the price. Yes. But they'll come to a consultation with a Louis Vuitton bag or a Gucci belt. Yes. And you're complaining about $20 or $50, but you have like $500 yeah. on your, on exactly. your belt. Exactly. So exactly. like really think about it. <laughs> Absolutely true. And I think it's sometimes from like my mother would always say, she was like, people buy what they want and borrow what they need. That is so, so true. Mentality, like our mindset. (laughs) And and that way, and we can say, you know, and that that helps me set boundaries. It helps me to say no, right? Or to say, oh, no, no, this is, this is going to be more. And if you don't want to do it, it's okay. I understand everybody has a budget and I've been there. You don't have to accept crumbs from anybody. Exactly. Because the work that that you are doing is so valuable, especially because you do it with such skill and with such good cheer. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And like I said, I feel like I'm helping. I'm helping people. Oh, like the the bride who came to me. It was about 10 days before her wedding. Yes. Tell us about that. Because I think that that was something you were really excited about, that you did this kind of emergency bridal fix. What was it? What happened? Hey, friends. Hey, what are you doing on Thursday around 3 p.m. or so? You got 30 minutes to hang out with Black Women Stitch? You got 60? If so, come through for 30 Minute Thursdays. Thursdays, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can chill with Black Women Stitch on Instagram Live or talk with us through the two-way audio on Clubhouse at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Thursdays for 30 minutes. Come hang out, chill, and have fun with us. See you Thursday. Oh, man. She custom ordered a dress from, she said, overseas. I'm thinking maybe it was China. (laughs) They have a lot of like designer dresses that look really great in the pictures. And then when you get them, I've seen a lot of people with the, this is what they said it was. And then when I put it on my actual body, that's not what happened. Yeah. Well, actually the the dress was top notch. The quality was really good. The sewing was done really well. And this is another advantage that you have to alterations. You see other people's work. And that's how I learn as well. I'm like, oh, how was this put together? So I can see all these things. So the work was really, really good. And I I don't know, it took a few months for the dress to arrive. Beaded dress, rhinestones. It was a heavy dress. It was like 40 pounds. Yeah, it was a heavy drip, poof, ruffles everywhere, like a huge train. And she sent me a message saying, I ordered this dress and I can't fit. Can you do something about it? I'm like, it depends. <laughs> I was like, I need to. Was eat. this someone that you knew? Was this someone no. that, just a, someone who approached you just out of the blue? Someone, someone who, who 
had heard of your work and heard of what you could do and they approached you for this repair. Okay. Yes. So on Instagram, in most of my posts where I put my work, I'll put the hashtag Memphis Seamstress because I'm in Memphis. Yes. So a lot of people, and that's a business strategy, a lot of people who are searching on Instagram will search seamstress or Memphis seamstress or, and so when they come across that hashtag, they come across me. Yes. So they'll either message me or book through my booking site. But anyways, she messaged me and said, uh, yes, this is what's going on. And I was like, mm, it depends. Let me see what's going on. And she sent me a picture of, I um, wish I had the picture here, but anyway, she sent me a picture of the dress and she, she could barely put it across her waist. Wow. Like it was fully zipped, like not fully zipped, like it was unzipped and she couldn't lift it past her waist. It was oh. that small. Wow. Well, at least it got over the hips. So that was like, yay. It couldn't even, I don't know. It could <laughs> She was going to have to wear her dress like this. Like. Holding it up with two hands. You know, I looked at that and I was like, Woo, <laughs> what are we going to do here? And I asked her, I was like, okay, does it have like the side seams? Not that she would know the. <laughs> right, right. So you start saying, well, what's the seam allowance? And she's like, what's a seam? I was <laughs> like, does it have enough to take out? Like if I open it up and does it have enough? Because some clothing are made with that allowance. Yes. A lot yeah. of couture stuff is made with like a one inch allowance and the fast fashion stuff is made with a quarter inch allowance. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no fixing it. So what happens? Was there enough seam allowance? So she was like, I don't know. I have to ask the designer. So she went back and asked the designer and they were like, yes, they can take it out. They've made it in a way that you can do alterations. Oh, okay. I was like, mm, okay, I'll, I'll need to see the dress before I say anything. So she brought the dress over, could not fit it. And I was looking and it was beaded. It was beaded all around. So even taking it out, I was like, this is going to be too much work. I really can't do anything. <laughs> and she burst into tears. Oh. I was like, I know, I know, I know it's like 10 days before the wedding and I would be crying. I was like uh, tearing up. Because like, we'd all be in there crying because it's not my fault you brought me this dress 10 days before your wedding, girl. I'm so sorry for all of us. Everybody's crying <laughs> in this situation. People who don't even know you and hear the story later will also probably be crying for you because womp, right. womp, that's sad. Yes. And I was like, she probably paid quite a bit of money for this dress because... Ooh. 40 pounds of dress I know and then she had to have it shipped to America yes. from overseas and she said she paid for the shipping so it was it was a lot of money that she spent so I looked at the dress again I was like okay let me think let me think what can we do here so the side seams was not an option I was going to open that up to yes. see but there was beading and I was like if I start to take off the beading that's work for me I'll have to rebead the dress yes. I was like mm -hmm, work smart not hard that's I, right. and we're not doing that so I was like okay corset back is an option oh. it's the corset back the lace the corset lace yes. tie yes yes I was like okay that's an option but I need to see if it really is an option I could take out the back seam because there was a seam in the back and there was no beading there. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, let's see if I open that up, if you can actually put on the dress. Okay. So we did that. And again, like I said, the workmanship on that dress was exceptional because I had a hard time even oh, like- so like, oh good, yes. you didn't have to just go pop, pop, pop and all the- right. all No, the <laughs> I was like, well, th that was perfect. The dress was going to stay on. <laughs> because of the weight yes so I did that and then had her come in for an, another fitting and praise the lord <laughs> the dress could go up up okay <laughs> okay so now you've opened up the back and yes did it have a center back zipper or was a zipper on the yes side? so it had a zipper okay so, so I was like zipper out that closure open out open the seam entirely and so now you are looking at the person the clients in the dress the mm -hmm. dress is totally gapped open now because there's no zipper and no back seam. Yeah. Yeah. And you think corset. How do you decide 
like where to put it and how much and how did you find matching fabric? Yes, like, how, I, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I guess most corset lace backs go up to the waist. That's the traditional standard. <laughs> but I was like, you don't really have any options. So we have to make it go all the way down to her just above the knee because <laughs> all there was open, all My down God. there was open. So whew, I was like, I mean, you don't have any other choice. <laughs> she was like, I don't even care as long as it's just closed and my tail is not out there for the world to see <laughs> that is not a memory i want for my wedding I oh. want a blooper <laughs> where one of my butt cheeks comes flying out of the dress as i walk down the aisle that is not what i'm hoping for as a wedding memory <laughs> oh my gosh so i was like okay we'll do that so um i had to kind of like because there are kits that come already made you don't have to make the loops oh wow and the tie so I was like, that's not even going to work because the standard kit is probably not like, enough. right. Yeah. It's not long enough. So I'm like, I have to create that. So I was like, okay, I can do that and just have like a panel of fabric to cover, yes. Yes. <laughs> cover all the open area. Right. And right. then, yeah, you can tie it up and you'll be good. So that's what we did. But again, because of the time, I couldn't find fabric that was a close match to her gown. It was, I think, off-white. Okay. An off-white gown with beading and rhinestone. <laughs> but the only fabric that I had was, it was like white, white, white. Oh, I see. But not off-white. Okay. Yeah. So it was a bit of a, a difference, but I was like, okay, for the lace tie, I can add some rhinestone on it so that it kind of like hides yes. the contrast. Yes. So when it's tied up, you won't really see oh, much of the white. So we did that again and finally finished. I think I finished the dress. Her wedding was on a Sunday. I finished it Friday. My Friday, God. she came in for her last fitting to see if it actually like <laughs> clothes and everything. Wow. Oh, forgot to mention the dress was too big. So I couldn't use my sewing machine. Oh my God. I had to hand sew everything. Listen, I am so confused right now. <laughs> I am so confused because earlier in this conversation, and I know this because I am recording the conversation, you said that you left the job because it was high stress. Yeah. <laughs> and you chose to step out on faith to something you loved that would be less stressful and not deplete you and not have you all worried. And then somebody brings you a 40 pound wedding dress 10 days before a wedding that cannot be sewn on a sewing machine, <laughs> also not clothes, and that you also don't have fabric for, and that you also cannot order a kit for, so that you must also build a corset that is about probably maybe 22 inches long from top to bottom. <laughs> I'm trying to understand where the stress-freeness of it all is. Because when just, I wasn't even there. And I feel like my blood pressure is going up because I have an anxiety about this story. And you're here laughing and cackling and kicking like it was the funniest thing you ever had in your life. What? You're killing me. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I think it, it was a God thing because isn't there that saying that there's some things that come easy to you and to others, they'll be like, yes, uh, that's not easy. <laughs> exactly. That is very true. That is true. That this is your gift and yes. your gift makes it easy for you. Yes. Right? Yes. My yes. gifts are different kind of gifts. <laughs> and they, that's not easy for me. That's not something that I would ever want to do at all. Uh, Even for people that I love, like my husband will be like, can you hem my pants? And I'll be like, oh, can I give you $5 to take them to the dry cleaners? I got you $5. Give the dry cleaner the $5. <laughs> I would absolutely rather give the dry cleaners $5. Oh, when you said so it's easier, I would rather make him a fresh pair of pants. <laughs> I would. I absolutely I'm like, would. Let me just hem the pants. Let me refashion them. Let me take them in. I'll do that. <laughs> hey, but you know what I love about what your whole method? Well, you have to tell us the end of the story. So- the dress fit. Yes. She was happy. She was happy. She walked down the aisle. And again, me, I think me being the perfectionist that I am, I looked at the picture and I was like, they didn't lace it up, right? <laughs> I 
I was like, you had enough, you know, had enough ties to nicely lace that up. And she was like, well, we kind of ran out of time because apparently she made her own wedding cake. And so it was like seven, seven tiers. And so she was setting up the wedding cake. And so she didn't have time to fully lace up her dress. I like priorities. <laughs> wow. It was laced up. It was laced up. It was really hey, good. She did not walk down the aisle with a dress that had a gigantic gash Listen. down the back because she Listen. couldn't it up. Exactly. Exactly. And I was like, as long as she walked down the aisle, happy. She got married. And she was and, happy. Yes. And you made that happiness happen. So that's a really great feeling. Now, yes, yes. tell me what are some of the important things that you think you learned from that process? Did it boost your confidence? Did it give you like, what kind of resources and skills do you think that you develop, you know, from that process? Woo. Problem solving skills. <laughs> Yep. That sounds like one. It definitely kind of like elevated my skill. Because like I said, when I, when I do these alterations, that's how I learn. I learn how stuff is constructed, how it's put together, the materials that I use. So for me, I was like, oh, these are one of the gowns, probably like $10,000 gowns that we see. Mm -hmm. Um, This is how they are made. Obviously it wasn't $10,000, but. Right. 40 pounds though 40 pounds and if you say it's well sewn and that the seam allowances were big enough yeah. like that's not fast fashion like no that does take time and skill to do yeah yeah so it's not like it was just some flashy cheap thing that was coming like no. from forever 21 no. or whatever no no not at all. <laughs> that's not that so yeah so I definitely learned more about the construction of that type of wedding dress and exposure, me saying yes to that and showing my work kind of opened up doors for me because now everyone's like, oh, can you do this for me? Can you, my dress isn't, yeah, I'm getting a lot of my dress. Listen, I bought this dress from over here. <laughs> I think you should have a, a standard fee that says, if your dress comes from overseas, <laughs> I, I don't know where, I don't know what country, I don't care if you get it from China. I don't care if you get it from Italy. I don't care if you even get it from Zimbabwe yeah. or Zambia, wherever yeah. you are getting your dress. If it is not coming from the hands of Monde, right? there is a fee. And yeah. that fee yeah. is a sliding scale. Mm-hmm. Right? That's true. And the sliding scale is based on the seam allowances of the dress. <laughs> Or the weight of the dress, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, because it goes back to what you were saying before about somebody coming in with the Louis or Gucci or Balenciaga bag. Mm It's like $3,000 or whatever. I don't know how much Gucci's cost. But anyway, if they're coming in with that and they could be thinking, well, you know what I could do? I could buy this dress from overseas for cheaper and I can give it to her and pay her just a little bit to make it work out. And like- My mother says this too. This is a quote from her grandmother. She says, the lazy woman works the hardest. Oh. (laughs) And I find that true for myself. Anytime Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, let me just do a shortcut. (laughs) She'll say like, if you can't pay to do it once the right way, can you pay to do it twice? Right? Mm -hmm. So if you pay like, oh, no, no, I'm going to, somebody here can do it for 20 as opposed to 80, but then they do it for 20. And it's Mm -hmm. not as good as the person that was going to do it for 80. And then you're doing it again. Right. Exactly. It's going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more. And I I tell them, I'm like, yeah, it's going to cost you. (laughs) It might even cost you more than the cost of the dress or whatever it is that you got. So be ready to pay. I was telling them that be ready to pay. (laughs) Be ready to pay because it is not. Yes, exactly. It's like they're presenting you with this puzzle to solve. Right. Exactly. It, It is. And they set themselves up for it by buying this dress. And like, this was the only one that they wanted or could have when they could have bought a dress that fit them. Exactly. Exactly. And there's certain circumstances where that's harder. I know that folks, you know, there's some folks who do indeed because of the shapes of their bodies aren't able just to buy stuff off the rack. That's going to fit. Right. right? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, no, that's pretty normal to have because the way that things are sized are ridiculous, you know? I know, I know. It's sad. The idea yeah. of like having a woman with no hips and like, you know, built like a pencil, right? <laughs> and not everybody's built like a pencil. Not everyone's built like that. So it's tough, but yeah. 
And, but it's so wonderful that you had the skill to kind of close that gap for people. And one thing I also want to give you a shout out for is that one of the great things about alterations is that it's a, such a great enhancement to sustainability. Oh, so yeah. rather than saying this doesn't fit, so I'm going to throw it out and put it in a landfill, you say this doesn't fit, but I'm going to make it fit and then I'll make yeah. it last longer and I can enjoy yeah. that longer. So that's yeah. really wonderful. Yes. And I wish more people could consider that. And I kind of like tell people, oh, yeah. when you're buying stuff, if you can buy it bigger, great, get it altered. Yeah. I don't know about the small stuff. That's just emergency. <laughs> emergency yes. altering. Yes. But if you can buy it bigger or if it's big in your closet, right. Those are alterations. Yes. 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 So. And you can make things bigger too, just like you did with the, the beautiful oh, yeah. packing. If they had laced it up properly. Yeah. It would have been even better than it already was. No. <laughs> We have to wrap up our time now, but I'm going to ask you a question that I've been asking folks of late. The slogan Ooh. for the Stitch Please podcast is that we will help you get your stitch together. Ooh. Okay. We'll help you get your stitch together. <laughs> All right. So now if someone came to you and said, Monday, how can I, what would you say to help somebody get their stitch together? What kind of advice would you offer to help somebody get their stitch together? Like, you know, Monday, I need to get my stitch together. What do you recommend? What would you say? Oh, that's a toughie. <laughs> so many things to say. I don't know. Get your stitch. To, I wanted to say the other word. <laughs> <laughs> you can substitute it out. I do it all the time. <laughs> get your stitch. How can I get my stitch together? Well, I would say if there's something that you've always wanted to do or something that's pressing on your heart to do, but you, I don't know, felt like you haven't had the courage to do it or just something, you feel something is holding you back. I would say, take a step in faith, do it and see where that leads you. Yeah. So that would be my, my thing. <laughs> this is such a wonderful conversation we've had today, Monday. I am so grateful for you taking the time. And where can folks find you on the socials? Because we're going to include all those links, but where can we find you? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. It was an amazing chat. You can find me on social media as Monday's Threads. Facebook, I have a Facebook page under Monday's Threads. Instagram, I'm Monday's underscore Threads. And I think you'll have all the information, right, Lisa? Yes. And YouTube, I'm also there as Monday Threads. And then my website is www.monde. C-H-I-S-E-N-G-A dot com. So mondechisenga.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Monday Mutumba Chisenga, for being with <laughs> us today. We had so much fun, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was a delight. You've been listening to the Stitch Please podcast the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. We appreciate you supporting us by listening to the podcast. If you'd like to reach out to us with questions, you can contact us at blackwomenstitch at gmail.com. If you'd like to support us financially, you can do that by supporting us on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and you can find Black Women Stitch there in the Patreon directory. And for as little as $2 a month, you can help support the project with things like editing, transcripts, and other things to strengthen the podcast. And finally, if financial support is not something you can do right now, you can really, really help the podcast by rating it and reviewing it anywhere you listen to podcasts that allows you to review them. So I know that not all podcast directories or services allow for reviews, but for those who do, for those that have like a star rating or just ask for a few comments, if you could share those comments and say nice things about us at the Stitch Please podcast, that is incredibly helpful. Thank you so much. Come back next week and we'll help you get your stitch together.